All right, hi everyone. We are here with Ben from Preachers and Sneakers. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Ben, for being on the show here, and thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for having me, y'all. Yeah, this so, is fun. Appreciate it, y'all. So, Ben, um, for people who don't know, maybe just, I mean, a lot of people know. So <laughs> just give like a quick rundown. You started a social media account. Oh, you started an Instagram account a while back, and it kind of took off, but maybe just give a quick rundown of your Instagram account. Yeah, two years ago, I was sitting on my couch after, so y'all are, are from the Dallas area, so you know Deep Ellum, right? Mm -hmm. you know, been to Deep Ellum before? Yeah. So I used, during my MBA program, I was DJing there, moonlighting, and I uh, played at this place every other weekend or so that no one would ever come to. But I would DJ for like five hours until like three o'clock in the morning. One night, I had DJed well until like three o'clock, 3.30 in the morning. So the next day, I slept through church. And for whatever reason that day, I had decided to sit on my couch and watch YouTube worship videos, which I had never done previously in lieu of going to church. And I looked up the song that I liked and I saw the music video and the guy leading worship for the video was wearing a pair of Yeezy 750s. And for whatever reason that morning, I was like, hmm, that, that feels a little weird. These shoes are reselling for like 800 bucks and this guy's a worship leader. I don't know why that makes me feel a certain type of way, but I felt compelled to make a video on my Instagram. And then on the, the other side of YouTube, they serve up all these other videos of kind of similar type guys and girls. And I realized, oh, there's all these pastors and worship leaders wearing like the most sought after kicks uh, in the sneaker world. And so I made a few videos and just saying like, hey, do these sneakers are worth 800 bucks or a thousand bucks. That seems a little weird to me. I mean, that's paraphrasing, but I was a little snarkier back then. And <laughs> Uh, nine days later, I, I created the account after somebody encouraged me to, uh, a close friend encouraged me to just do an account doing just that. And I copied those videos over from my personal Instagram. And then um, in a month, I had 100,000 followers and wow. uh, people on all sides getting real angry about religion and wealth and church and all that kind of stuff. And uh, somehow two years later, I am still here. <laughs> my wife and my parents are super proud of, of the uh, life I've chosen to live. What I love about it, um, well, at least when I came aware of the Instagram account was you were kind of like, you weren't explicit about your commentary. It was just, here's a picture, here's the shoe, here's the price. Interesting. And then you would do this kind of, kind of middle of the road snarky, co like copy where you weren't really sure what your stance on it was. And then it was almost like a Rorschach test. Like people would kind of read into it. Some people are like, oh, those are dope shoes. And yeah. some people are like, this yeah. is Satan incarnate. Yeah. Like this is the worst thing in the yeah, world. Yes. Was that, was that an intentional? That's exactly like, how, right. And how'd you navigate that? Sorry, I interrupted you. It's the delay. Oh, My bad. There's, there's My a bad. lag. There's a lag. It's fine. Totally fine. The internet sucks. But uh, the devil's trying to stop um, us. <laughs> what? What? But like talk That's to me right, about that. But he won't. <laughs> no, he won't. Mm -hmm. Not uh, today. Jesus is praying for us. Um, Get behind me. <laughs> so, like, talk to me about that. Was that an intentional decision, or like, how did you n navigate that? Yeah, I, I didn't. When I started making these videos, and eventually, what made the account popular was I would screenshot or repost a pastor's photo that they had posted themselves, and then just jump post the price of the sneaker or what it was worth or how much it cost, and that those two things in one picture just made people lose their minds uh, because for a long time, no one had had to contend with the idea that their pastor was wearing $1,500 shoes or the idea that they could potentially afford that kind of thing or afford to not sell shoes worth that much. And so, yeah, the copy thing I, I fell into, like, I'm not a, I'm a writer now, but at the time I was an idiot. I'm still an idiot, but <laughs> for whatever reason, I was able to find this middle ground where I, could write funny quips and let the pictures do all the talking. Because at the same time, I, you know, I didn't want to alienate one side or the other because I would have just come out. I mean, like, I would have sounded like a jackass if I was like, this is always wrong, no matter mm -hmm. what. Like, I am so anointed and inspired that I know every single nuanced situation that this is always wrong. And people, plenty of people came to say that kind of stuff in my comments. But me being in the middle, I was like, dude, this, this is uh, causing people to lose their minds. Uh, I want to lean into that, but also I'm still trying to figure out all this stuff myself.
So that's why I kind of well, kept the, it, the commentary kind of in the middle. Yeah. Is it true that then some pastors started posting pictures of themselves, like from the a- ankle up and like, you were like, he's not getting my shoes. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> okay, I'll go for your jacket. Yeah. Like yeah. that jacket's from Louis Vuitton, $8,500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they didn't ex- uh they didn't explicitly say that but there was a distinct shift uh the guys that maybe were a little more insecure about ending up on the account but uh they can't a lot of them can't help themselves but wear their designer stuff and so they would rather try to uh, like either not address or not acknowledge that the account exists or uh a lot of them you like you do get to see a lot of insecurities at play because people you know, for whatever reason, have a ton of designer items and people even raising an eyebrow to it makes them feel, uh, it makes them angry in a lot of ways. So it was an interesting, it's still an interesting look into culture, Christian culture. Do you think think, um, at a deeper level when something really catches like that, I mean, I've, I've followed Instagram accounts where they catch and often it's because it's acknowledging something that a lot of people deep down felt or like you're acknowledging something where it's like, Oh, we can talk about this or, or, and I'm sure like, it's not like you're the first person to ever think of this. You kind of gave a voice to it. Like, what do you think deeper is going on that caused people to really like catch on (laughs) to this account? I I heard from thousands of people that said that exact thing, basically, hey, me and my community had talked about this, but we never knew how to uh, address it or the way that you displayed this made it more tangible or way like a thing to point at to say, this is it like this is what I've had beef with. Um, And then the the subject matter itself brings all these different groups of people. So like there's a whole atheist set of followers that are like this is why i hate religion this Mm -hmm. this very thing and then there's people that are maybe like deconstructing or ex-evangelicals that are like this is why i left you know Mm -hmm. standard evangelical christianity and then there's an also a subset of people that are still in evangelical christianity that are like this is a problem like we care too much about this kind of stuff and then there's another set of people that are fans of these guys that either want to defend them to me or just be like, oh yeah, he's got so much drip. It's, it's crazy. He, he brought a word last weekend. You should listen to his message, that kind of stuff. So it, it uh, appealed to a lot of different types of people. And that was by no design of my own. It, it just ended up like a lot of it was luck. And, uh, but I was happy to be able to maybe create something tangible for people to point to and start discussing. Now you were anonymous for a long time and then decided to come out as Ben. <laughs> you but, are come, come out, out as Ben. Preachers but, and sneakers. Preachers but, and sneakers. But what I, but what I'm but what I'm the most curious about, what has been the most difficult or challenging part of running this account? Like what's been like the most brutal, like worst part, or has there been a worst part of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that question. Not no not many people have asked that um throughout this whole process. So I appreciate it. <laughs> We're high five. It's a couple things. Like one, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I appreciate y'all making me think the, and I usually do this in therapy. Uh, so it's nice to do this for free for once. Um, come the, the, what's the youngest you ever remember feeling this way? Right. <laughs> yeah. um, I be like, I'm a people pleaser type guy. I don't, surprisingly enough, I don't like upsetting people. I don't really care to stir the pot for any reason. Um, this two years in, I feel like a responsibility kind of, uh, to do it now. But, um, the toughest part was like, I'm still a Christian. I still go to church. My wife worked at a mega church, basically the entire time we did this. And, uh, the toughest part was hearing from Christians that basically said, you know, I was being divisive or that I was causing people to leave the faith or I was the reason people hated Christianity or I was going to have to account for the souls of people that left the faith because of me showing the price tag of sneakers, that kind of thing. Like I care, I, I care about that feedback. That doesn't feel great to hear that. And, um, and then, so like that, that's pretty exhausting and doesn't feel great ever. Uh, and then also, the 
I mean, the whole conversation is just exhausting in and of itself. It, there's no, there's no real concrete answers. It's worth discussing, but it's also not like if I had the answers, I would tell everybody. Um, and so being kind of seen as one of the guys that's talking about this kind of thing or leading the discussion, it's exhausting just because you want to be able to help somebody that has these kind of questions. Um, and that takes work. It takes study. It takes research. And I'm just like, so unequipped. Like I'm a military guy I worked in the business world for a couple of years. I've just got no credibility for this kind of thing. But I think that might be the, the attraction to some people is that I'm not speaking Christianese a lot of times, or I'm not like, I'll cuss a little bit every once in a while. Like, so I, I've tried to cope with, you know, the position that I'm in, but, uh, yeah. So just, it's a very negative thing. It causes people to really like truly deep down their colors to come out and be really mean. And, uh, you know, that never feels good. So how do you, how do you navigate? It reminds me of, uh, there was an interview where John Stewart from the daily show was in an interview with two like serious news reporters and they were saying you have a responsibility to uh, portray the whole story and everything and john stewart's perspective was like we come on before like puppets making prank calls like <laughs> like we don't have a responsibility we're just doing <laughs> satire like this is just it's just the the point of the joker or the the court jester is to point out that the emperor doesn't have clothes like to say mm -hmm. to say the thing that that no one will say and to not care too much about the responsibility of that just to say it and like from your perspective what would you say to people that struggle with that because i hear this a lot and i struggle with this like what is my quote unquote responsibility for my platform or people understanding what i'm saying or understanding what my take is and then what is like hey i'm putting it out there like bob dylan like the song it means whatever you think it like what i don't i'm not going to yeah. tell you what the song means that's on you. That's your responsibility. I just said it, you know, like what, I don't know. Do you, do you have like a, something that you would say to someone struggling with that or some new way of thinking about that? I'm trailing off on this question. I had a yeah. really good question. Yeah. Earlier. <laughs> Man, I'm really, I'm with you. 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 Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, what's your like uh, new take uh, on right now? Yeah. Early on when there's, hundreds of thousands of people following and media agencies asking me all these questions about my agenda and everything. And then people getting pissed about me starting this platform and people being mean to each other in the comments. It very like for a long time, I was like, I do have a responsibility for this. I'm going to delete every single negative comment and I'm going to try to apologize to people. And I'm, you know, I feel so bad and I'm going to try to tell them to not harass other people. When in fact, it's like, I have as much responsibility for other randos on the internet's actions as Fox News does for their comment section. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, it's hilarious the peop the rules that people define for the account of which you created. Like, oh. people will message me all the time saying, uh, like, people will message me all the time saying, um, you know, you started this account to shame pastors. Blah blah. It's like, oh, I oh I did. You you know the rule. Like you're not supposed to, like I posted about Tim Tebow one time and people lost their minds because he's not a preacher, even though he's kind of a preacher. And people messaged me like I had uh, violated the terms of which I had promised them I would put content out. It's like, dude, I'm gonna post whatever the heck I wanna post when I wanna post it. I owe nothing to you. Um, now, granted, I get, I get why people want, like they want me to, care about people not being terrible to each other in the comment section. And I hired, I had a man, media, media manager for the first year or so that would go in there and, and delete the outright hateful stuff. Cause like, I don't want to be a part of that, but also there it's for like, I have 260,000 followers now. It is impossible for me to filter yeah. out all the uh, insane trolls on the internet. And so eventually I had to be like, look, people are going to be terrible. I'm not terrible to anybody on the internet. Like, sure, I will make jokes in a way to point out something that seems inconsistent. But if you attribute the comment section to who I am as a person, then yeah, sure, you're gonna think I'm an a-hole, but I'm not. And a lot of people are just not willing to, to, to distinguish those two things or like even think about it for a second. Do you guys have questions? Yeah. Yeah, do you have, uh... I want to know a little bit more about the inner workings uh, here in Dallas, I guess, with these 
pastors. So do you have relationships with any of the people that you're posting? And have you had in-person conversations where someone's like, bro, you posted me on the, on your page. <laughs> like, blast. I thought we were friends. Come on. <laughs> Uh, it is funny how people will laugh at, at the account or your content until you post about their guy, and then <laughs> they'll very, they'll be very quick to say, "You used to be funny. This used to be an important conversation, but now you've gone too far." I mean, people will literally do that. And um, I do have relationships with several, like the guy Mac Brock, uh, who's a worship leader. That he was the guy that was wearing the Yeezys that I initially saw at the very beginning. Him and I are friends. I mean, I don't think that. He loved people overnight being like, screw you, man, for wearing Yeezys. Um, but him and I uh, have hung out several times, uh, both times it being in Dallas. Um, and before all the stuff with Carl Lentz, him and I had a relationship. We talked on the phone several times. And uh, I've messaged with several other of the guys that maybe weren't as happy. Uh, some of the wives have messaged me. Some of the parents of the guys have, have messaged me. Oh, wow. So it it gets real weird real quick. Like there was, <laughs> there was one time where the guy's dad messaged me, basically calling me shallow. And then the guy's brother messaged me, thanking me for starting the account. I was like, dude, you gotta, y'all gotta clear out your family stuff. Don't be doing this through me, bro. I don't need to do this amongst each other, bro. So like you get to see this weird, like sliver of humanity mm-hmm <laughs> that's wild yeah so yeah so i have relationships with some of them uh i they're not really like eager to dap it up with me and get some beers but uh <laughs> so like i had with the audiobook that i just put out at the end there's an interview with judah smith who's justin bieber's main guy and right. him and i had a really good conversation and we will text every once in a while but um i get why they're not really trying to invite me to thanksgiving but also <laughs> the ones that are secure understand what I do. And I think understand the conversation and, do, and understand that I like, I'm not just some troll. Has anyone taken legal action? Yeah. Who has sued you? <laughs> In as much as you can say. Yeah. Do you have any libel or slander suits <laughs> pending? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was, I was fearful of that at first because people were talking real strong. Like people mm -hmm. were, getting real angry at the very Keyboard beginning warriors there was mm -hmm. one photographer yeah i mean people call me that all the time too so i get it whatever there was one guy in at life church which is craig groschel's church that uh, basically sent me a pseudo cease and desist because i used one of his photos from their instagram and i was like all right i'll just use these hours and hours of other content that i have like so be it but yeah. i mean social media is it's kind of a I'm not a lawyer, but the, the, I think it's called like fair use or something. Basically, if you put it online, the people that reuse your content are usually pretty protected because you're basically choosing to put it in a public platform. Um, so nobody's sued me or anything. People have talked big, but have you had, <laughs> they can come at me. Like I can afford attorneys too, bro. <laughs> yeah <laughs> have you have you had anyone have like, uh, maybe like a, like a change of heart or like, a like have you had any like really positive like someone that you put on a blast reckoning. and then maybe like a shift or a change that was really positive yeah i mean i'll i'll continue to say like i don't i never saw myself as putting people on blast like people have already put their own pictures mm. out in the public they've put themselves on blast um mm -hmm. people will quickly characterize what I do is putting them on blast. Like now that I have a big platform, yes, when I put a picture up, it goes to a lot of people. So it is at least more public than maybe they were intending it to be. But a lot of these guys have millions of followers. So like my platform shouldn't be that big of a deal to them. But I've over the past two years, I do this less and less now because it just sucks up so much time to have these conversations over DMs or email or on the phone or whatever. But yeah, I've had plenty. I mean, even Judah Smith, uh, who's one of the biggest kind of Instagram pastor dudes in, in the world told me that he gave away all of his Gucci because he didn't want the message wow. that he was giving to be a distraction. Oh. Or he, he, he didn't want his clothes to be a distraction uh, from the message that he was saying, which I respected a ton because this dude yeah. is gifted a lot of nice stuff. He's got a lot of high profile friends. 
And then other, like, especially kind of the maybe B and C level pastors message me all the time saying, you know, this account has helped me or um, how do you say it? Encourage me to reconsider what I wear before I get on stage. Just like mm-hmm. even just ha- giving it a second thought, because for a lot of people, they were just like, oh, I'm going to look hip. I'm going to wear whatever I want. I, I had no idea people cared about what I wore, or the message that it sent. And so now uh, I think a lot more guys and girls are aware of that, which uh, feels fulfilling to me. Sure. Like it was kind of messy and people's feelings got hurt. But if I can get people to like genuinely consider others, like how to serve others in their community by what they dress or how they present themselves, then I think that's a win long term. Yeah, we, uh, so we're all Catholics, <laughs> we're all practicing Catholics, but, and so it's just interesting of like reckoning of like what's going on in the Catholic world and like things. And I, I mean, I'm just seeing people are, you see so many people, Protestants, Catholics, leaving the faith, leaving the church. And it could just be because of one person or something that happens, one thing. So I think it's like bringing to light, like what you said, speaking to light of like, Hey, this is something that's going on. And I'm just going to put it out there and see, And I know in the Catholic world, like things that are going on in our church and we're, we're seeing like, Hey, this is what's going on. Um, and like putting, just putting words to, it, I think, and having a conversation with it and, and kind of having a reckoning <laughs> with what's going on. And so it's like, it, yeah, I can just see it across all spiritual like faith levels of like, let's bring to light things that have been hidden or that have just kind of slid by or just kind of been growing silently. Let's put a light to it and bring it to light and let's have like a conversation about it and see and people hopefully people will have like recognition yeah, of the, maybe I do need to change the internet, or, the internet just kind of ex- really exposes yeah. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of people, and yeah. and, a, and a lot for a good thing. For good, yeah. yeah, for good and <laughs> yeah. Bad and yeah, bad. right. What's yeah. been done in the dark will be made known in the light. Come on, yeah. baby. Did you read that? In the yeah, and it's all it. It seems incremental. It seems incremental where like none of these things at a micro level seem to matter that much, but when you look, especially, I think we're probably all the same age. Uh, our generation has kind of lived through the kind of 90s CD smashing uh, yeah. of Christianity. I didn't grow up Catholic, so I, I, if I'm off base, uh, no, we did just that. let me know. <laughs> but uh, we did yeah. now, I didn't know I, I didn't know I cared about this about kind of bringing stuff into the light for us to discuss because a lot of people just don't even want to give it the energy to think about. It. It's like, well, it's kind of an imperfect, messy thing. There's no real great answer, so you know, let's just not address it. Like, well, dude, now we're looking at all these big systems of church and how we do things that are just accepted as status quo. When in fact, like there's probably better ways to do it and better ways to spend our money and uh, money specifically in Christian culture is always so taboo. And for that very reason, now it causes all these, all this different emotion when it really shouldn't. Um, And so I think at least with the account, with the book, it's, causing people to realize like, Hey, this is, it's okay to talk about this, or at least ask questions about this because, um, this, the global response and how angry people got is validation that this is a thing that has gone unaddressed for far too long. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Is it mostly, so because we are this, we call our podcast the most semi-Catholic podcast <laughs> in the world, just because we don't always talk about Christian things. We're, we're on the fringes, you know, we cuss on this podcast. I've been known to drop an F-bomb or two. Yeah. Um, so, nice. so uh, at, well, but we're all familiar with this like prosperity gospel, um, the Joel Osteen situation of like, name it and claim it and, you know, all of this stuff. So are most of these pastors, do you think, gifted you talked about gift being gifted gucci and all this stuff are they gifted a lot of these designer items or are they actually making enough money to spend a lot of money on clothing the prosperity like the bona fide prosperity dudes i'm pretty confident are just buying it because they're making so much freaking money off of a bs presentation that's Mm going to send people to hell if you believe in that kind of thing uh the 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 hipper guys like the fresher looking guys they they're more of a like kinder self-help motivational speaker type gospel those are the guys that are 
in with the pro golfers and NFL players and superstars, they get gifted a lot of stuff. I mean, specifically Bieber's guys. I mean, Bieber has unlimited money, and he's he, you know, he's very on fire about his faith right now. So he hooks these guys up with whatever they want um, to the point where they, they're like not asking for it, but he's like giving it to them. Um, so those two things are, are a big piece there. I mean, there's guys like Stephen Furtick, who's the, like the Supreme designer Don of evangelical preaching. <laughs> he is probably gifted things and can also afford, uh, a new designer outfit every single weekend. Um, so it's a, um, it's a mix of, of all three. How has, how has this kind of impacted your, your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with money? If you could just talk maybe a little bit about that, like how has that impacted your own perspective? Yeah, the, the money thing, talking about therapy again, I'm realizing or learning <laughs> that, that I've always have, I always have had my own issues with money and wealth and wanting to make more of it and feeling like other people have more and I wish I had more. Um, and there was some element of, or like I'm weird about like donating to a thing and then seeing the person that's the recipient of that donation uh, living better than I get to live. Now, part of that is the sinner in me. Like I should not have some irrational expectation for somebody that's living off donations to conform to my standard in my head of how I think they should live. I think that's, that's, uh, that's my own issue. But uh, I think what start like the reason I was able to like go so hard early on with the account is because uh, I had my own issues with money and felt like this was wrong or felt like this was them taking these guys taking advantage of people's donations every single time. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm more aware of the nuance and aware of all the kind of more micro situations that things could be a little different uh, about gifts and about side hustles and about all these kind of stuff. But at a mass level, I do think the church is still obsessed with money. Uh, it's a product of the people that are in our churches and we're all obsessed with money and fame and image and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's worth continuing to lean into. But personally, like when you have an account like this, it forces, I mean, for me, I felt insecure about the things I spent my money on or, or how much we gave or how much we saved. Um, and so it forced my wife and I to really audit everything. And I mean, it, it forced us to audit our personal socials. Like, Hey, where, like, where are the posts that we posted really trying to just flex on people and not <laughs> trying to just like share a fun moment. Uh, so it, it forced us to audit really everything in our lives. And then, uh, did you ask about faith too? My relationship to yeah. faith. Yeah. Um, the, being on the like the receiving end of angry Christians every day, every hour of the day did weigh on me a lot. Like it, it didn't leave a great taste in my mouth about people that seemingly believe the same thing as I do. And I, I know that I did a lot of this imperfectly and social media is very messy and I could have done a lot of different things better. Um, but it also was a good practice in that like it forced me to really dig into why I believe what I believe. And then also got me forced me to say, I don't know to certain things that I felt expected to say, I know um, to certain things. And there's, there's been a few issues that come up with faith that I just have to say, I don't know about this, man. Like, I don't know, yeah. I don't know how much is too much, or I don't know if, uh, if it's okay to get rich off of just preaching. I don't completely know, but I think that it's, not many people are trying to dig into it. And so for whatever reason, he's put me in the center of this. And so I'm trying to yeah. steward the opportunity as best I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if, yeah. you, if you don't mind sharing what, you know, especially like in the Catholic church, there's so much corruption that's coming to light and there's all this corruption. What, maybe if you could speak like what for you personally keeps you following Jesus? Like what, for, what, for, like, I don't know if that's too personal, but like, like getting some I don't testimony know. up in here. Yeah, like 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 I, I would love <laughs> I like that. I would love to hear I would love to hear like like I yeah, like I know that I really struggle with a lot of that and there's there's a way I would describe like my relationship currently um with Jesus and like I'm just wondering yeah. you especially like what what keeps you like when you have to go into your 
in a room and it's just you and him like what keeps you there in the midst of all this now that is a heady question um <laughs> i think the short answer probably like the shortest answer i think is creation human design like we just had our first child last week Welcome and that whole thing we love babies really, thank you thank you thank you he Thank has you. five. I, I love I love mine. I don't I don't love all babies. Wow. <laughs> five. Yeah. That's a lot. One one is one is plenty for now. Um <laughs> going through that whole thing, seeing a tiny little human be birthed out of another human after nine months of a pretty repeatable process. And like at a at at least I have to be like, this is way bigger than I could ever comprehend. And so that uh that mixed with some of the historical stuff about like you know all these different writings across all these different years across all these different hundreds and thousands of miles all having the same kind of central theme given the time uh slash like time being based off of jesus's uh existence on earth all those things objectively do enough for me uh but also at the same time especially now uh you know going through the election stuff and then being very involved with this kind of deconstructing world too there's plenty of things where i'm like god i really wish you would just outline some of this stuff for us because <laughs> it, you're all you're leaving us to basically wing it like the mm -hmm. you know, i talk about it a little bit in the book shameless plug but like the billions <laughs> of people on earth that live on like less than two dollars a day while i get to sit in richardson with doordash and air conditioning <laughs> and a playstation and god somehow equally loves us both uh in the small subset of america while all these other billions of people suffer in a lot of ways i don't know what to do with that and mm. i don't have an answer for it and i sometimes i have to be like look at least i get to follow a God that is not completely comprehensible because if mm. he was, that'd be a pretty small God. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we're getting into it now. I like that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben, I want to be, I want to be respectful of your time. A huge fan. We're going to be like huge supporters of you. Like any way we can help. Yeah. We hope one day we get you here in person. Yeah. Um, we have a studio in Grapevine. I mean, we're can... close. Yeah. 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 But um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity like like um, to plug the book. What's the book about? Why should people read it? Why should they go get it? Go to preachersandsneakers.com to order the book. Ooh. That's right. Uh, the book is just a deeper dive into the questions that came from the account. You know, Instagram is only so good at getting into deeper discussions. So the book is, is not a self-help book. It's not, it's not going to give you all the answers, but it's going to help drive some uh questions with hopefully drive some questions in yourself and maybe people around you it's about you know the church's relationship to fame and wealth and self-help and social media image all that kind of stuff super chill topics um all around but i think <laughs> it so far the response to the book has been really positive and people have validated like look these are things that i've thought about and this is um this has helped me frame some of these questions uh, for me and my community, that kind of stuff. And so that's what I want. I mean, basically, I want people to read the book to take a step further in trying to be more authentic with themselves, with their faith, and with like representing Jesus to the outside world if you believe in Jesus. And if mm -hmm. you don't believe in Jesus, at least be uh, more authentic on socials about like you don't have everything figured out and your life isn't perfect uh, because at a minimum, like there's a whole piece on social media about how it causes anxiety and depression and everything and any everybody should care about not contributing to that and other people so um that's the book it's it's very little about preachers physically wearing sneakers but it was a good <laughs> intro into some of the deeper stuff so i would love it if people bought it yeah you can buy it on preachers and it's on it's where all the books are sold there's a lot of books in the world so i don't blame you if if it gets lost in in the sea of all the other books out there but oh, uh, would we promise yeah. we promise that all 11 of our listeners will buy your book at so least you 11. Can, you can count on 11 more copies yes. to count be sold. on that baby 
Yep. If you don't buy his books, stop. That's, that's nine more yeah. than I have for my podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben, thanks so much for taking the time, man. Like really appreciate you appreciate what you're doing. And I just hope to see more. Uh, yeah, just more from you in the future. So thanks so much, Ben. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. Yeah. Praying for you, little, little one. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for having me. This is super fun. I love y'all's vibe and your Topo Chico stash. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Once maybe everything tones down with the baby, uh, would love to come kick it with y'all on Grapevine. It's just a show. Sounds so fun. great, man. Please do. Sounds great. It'll be awesome. All right. Take care, Ben. That's been Ben from Preachers and Sneakers. Woo! Woo! See you guys. <laughs>